Hey guys and gals, trappers out there. This is Shane, Papio Creek. Uh, hey, I just want to go over a few things with you. This is what happens when you use a long chain in a number two. I believe this is a Pioneer. This is uh, basically from the middle 70s, right at maybe turn of eight, right into 80. But anyway, as you can see, that coyote really tore this trap up. It popped the jaws. I call it jaw popping. Uh, here's an old herders. Again, this is on my fox line. I happen to get a coyote caught into it. This is what happens. Here's an old herders. I tried to center swivel it. I was learning as we were going. Uh, as you can see, that coyote really tore this one up too. I'm going to go over on how I set mine up now. Uh, with the traps available and reworking some of the old traps that I have uh, and we'll go from there. What I like is this one right out of the box is a number three Duke offset. I really like these guys and gals. I don't know why they work for me. Uh, they're a very fine trap with very simple modifications. Uh, and I'll get into that. We'll go over that right now. So come on up close and let's take a look at how I do this. Okay, first off what we're going to have to do is get a few tools. I've got some vice grips of different sizes. I have a small C-clamp with paddles. I have a little channel lock and a large channel lock. I have a screwdriver both straight and Phillips, a little small mallet, and of course I have the 4 inch or 6 inch grinders uh, with a wire wheel and so on. Anyway to start off, right out of the box, number 3, what I do is I will take, take the, the J hook tool and I always try to use the table as one of my hands and then I just push down it opens them up real nice. Uh, I will not reuse these. Uh, some people choose to. I will use them on possibly a smaller trap. This swivel, a coyote will completely crunch this down. So this will go on to a smaller trap. I can reuse this chain and we'll go into that as we go. Right off the get go, this clearance here has to be sucked up. So what I do is I take the big channel locks and I get it underneath of that dog and the frame and then I'll squeeze that tight. I'll, I'll try to smash that down tight. If you have to, you can take a small your small mallet and you can tap that in I want very little play there that's too much so I need to get it in some more I have no movement in there now. The reason being is that the coyote will get his teeth in here and he will pop this off and you'll lose this this dog. This will be completely gone. You'll need a metal detector to find it. The next thing that I do right out of the box is I'll take my grinder and I'm going to grind that tip that tit off on the pan. I left was basically a sixteenth of an inch. That's all that's in there. Now when that trap is set, that trap will be per that pan will be perfectly flat. We'll get into that as we go. A 
I've got the dog tight. I pounded that straight. I've taken about a sixteenth off of the pan, the tr or the trigger. I took about a sixteenth off. But you might want to hold off until this step. I've got the first lamination rod welded on <clears throat> the trigger side. You want to go ahead and set your your trap and you'll have to mark with the marker or soapstone where that is and then you'll take the grinder and grind that soapstone out just about a sixteenth of an inch that does it allows you the clearance needed for the trigger the dog the pan notch to all operate with this new lamination now it clears it's operational I just move just take about a sixteenth off of you get your pan to lay flush and then go ahead and put your spacer in and get your next piece of lamination in get that clamped and welded quarter 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 got the two top lamination pieces put into place with the spacer. Now I'll just take the ground, get it grounded. I'm using a little 110 wire welder. I'm just going to tap it in to place one on one side, one on the other. Welding that up, I just do about a quarter inch on each end and about a quarter inch in the middle. Spacer out. Now we can go to the next step to the bottom. Now with this, I wasn't concerned about the heat on the jaws. But what I got here is a tub of water. This tub is four inches high. You can make it four and a half if you want. And what I do is I'll set this in. I want the springs in the water, I want that pin that the springs are around to be in the water. So, I've been doing a few here today, I'm going to have to add some. But anyway, you just bring that water level up. What that's going to do is keep your cool. Go ahead.
ahead and center up your base. Tack the corner. Yeah. Go ahead and look at it. We're in the center. Take a stronger swivel. that clamp good and tight and then what I like to do is put it right back in what I'll do is I'll give that a little tack As you can see, I have it uh, jeopardized the springs in any way. That heat will really screw up the music wires. But anyway, that's plenty good. I've strengthened up uh, this base plate, uh, basically almost you know, double, with three quarters of the weight of the plates with the uh, center locators. This is just the way I choose to do it. Now the other way is that you can go and put a link on, or two or three, and then put your swivel on. But here I have a swivel right on, and we'll go into that, uh, how I do the chains here in just a little bit. We'll go with the number fours. These are four dukes. I use an awful lot of them. It's the same principle. These are the straight rods. And I just line that up. Put the spacer in. side in, even up the sides. Thing, just get it tacked into place. 